We have uh, the AME uh, presentation shortly, and then after that, uh, you can follow the schedule that you have in your hands. I see one very intelligent individual already picked one up. So um, go ahead and do that, and uh, we will announce uh, as the day goes on. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Even with my scratchy voice? <laughs> nah, that's good. Hey, it's really good to be back in Army West. Another year, another year older. I think I said that last year. Um, this year we've got some really exciting news to, to tell you all about. Uh, we've been working hard behind the scenes. There's a lot more going on in the media community than people would let you believe is happening. So without any further ado, let me go on and uh, talk about uh, what, uh, what uh, Aeon's been doing for the last three years. I should have had the picture, but never mind. Uh, three years ago, uh, it was actually the Vintage Computer Festival in the UK. Uh, we launched the Amiga One X1000. And uh, these are the Frieden brothers. I'm sure you know them. They're very... Uh, you'll see them again later in another guise, but that's them with the X1000. Um, the first um, next generation computer after A cubes uh, SAM 440 series. X1000 built on the PA Semi uh, CPU. You'll notice there's no bone ball in the case. This was really the first showing of this device. In fact, the day before it didn't work. It hadn't been working up to about 10 hours before the show. <coughs> and so Hans and Thomas jumped on a train. Uh, actually took the, uh, I wasn't sure it was a Eurostar or the flight, came to London, got to the show, plugged it in, and that's the first time I'd seen a working X1000. When you see the machine we've got today, the Amiga One X1000 is so stable, it's fast, you know, uh, nearly all the drivers are completed. <laughs> I say that with some... Uh... So the name on the board, uh, and the, red, the black and white cases, I won't say much more about the X1000 now. Uh, over the last two years, we've really improved the Radeon HD support. Uh, we now support all Radeon HD graphics cards from 4, 5, 6, and 7 series um, <coughs> with uh, full 2D and compositing. Uh, Warp 3D is one that's eluded us. Um, it was a special project that we um, contracted uh, the Hyperion developers to do uh, due to ill health of the developer serious little health of the developer over the last year, a couple of times. Uh, that's been delayed. But he's continued to work on uh, Gallium and other things. And I'll let uh, uh, Stephen uh, Soli tell you all about that. Well, that was me, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Red and HD cards. I mean, when I say we support the whole range, I wanted to prove it, so I got myself a, the top of the range 7 series and the top of the range 6 series. And yes, they work on the X1000 very nicely. I wouldn't recommend them. Four power supply connectors needed for that one. <laughs> not, it's not a problem with the X1000 normally. When you've got a fully loaded case, as I have, I've got all sorts in my, in my case, uh, you are struggling for power supply leads. Uh, the 6970, um, that requires three three extra power supply leads, and two fans, and there's a very noisy beast. Whereas the 7970 with one fan is a lot quieter, unusual. Uh, but anyway, works well, so just to prove that we cover the range. Uh, thanks to the work of uh, Alex Camona, uh, Rennie Olsen, uh, and latterly Lyle Hazelwood, and I didn't know Tony Wyatt as well, but Tony Wyatt. <laughs> We now have 32-bit 7.1 channel onboard HD audio, so we're really pleased about that. We always had, obviously, audio support on the X1000 through the PCI audio card, but now the onboard audio is really, really good. Excellent work, so well done, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> we actually have a, <laughs> an onboard Ethernet driver now. Uh, again, the X1000 always had Ethernet. We had a PCI card, but... Uh, I've actually taken, I shouldn't tell Lyle this, I've taken my PCI card out and I just use the onboard uh, Ethernet now. I just find it easier. 
Um, so thanks to the work of Costal, uh, OS4 developer, and, and Lately Lyle, we now have a beta driver, and hopefully within the next, I'll let Steve and Sony again say that, we should be coming out of beta and have the full. full. <laughs> 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 the X1000 <laughs> is multi-core. It's actually dual-core, so we've got uh, two binars there. And if you recognize them, that's Thomas and Hans. <laughs> <laughs> and the X1000 has been used for the X-kernel work. And, the, and I'm going to not say any more about X-kernel, uh, but it's obviously multi-core. And I'm going to leave that for Stephen again uh, for his, his conversation, his talk. So... So, things are not hap nothing's happening in the Amiga world, there's lots happening, right? LibreOffice, right? I thought I'd put that up because it's actually quite good. That was last week. <laughs> that <is> li <laughs> That's LibreOffice Libre Office booting on X1000. It's obviously got a Grim Reaper. Uh, but the good news is we will be calling for beta testers within uh, the next month. Thomas said two to three weeks, I'm saying a month, okay? So we will be looking for beta testers on X1000. And actually, probably X1000 and SAM and uh, X A1XE. We don't want a big group, we want a, a group that's gonna be active and working on it. But it's coming on. This was always a long-term project. I'm just pleased to say that it's, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we've, it's amazing what, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <my thighs. laughs> nice hat. Our Linux, uh, AR Linux uh, support team, uh, they've been really working well. And over the last uh, two years, we now have 14 distributions we can actually run on the X1000. And I would say about half of those, they run really well. They're very well supported. Um, thanks to the original Amiga 1 X1000 beta testers, we proved that we could improve on the uh, viruses port of Linux. And then a, a few of those distilled into a, a, core, a core team. Darren Stevens concentrates on Linux kernel for the X1000. And uh, Pat Wall uh, concentrates on the distributions. And recently, recently we added uh, Christian Zagotsky, and he, he's hit the ground running and I just can't stop him. He's just producing distribution after distribution. <coughs> So we now support the 3.10 kernel. Uh, we've got a, I just thought I'd throw some screens up of some of the, the, the Linux distributions we support. And so if you, if you haven't got the software under OS4, yeah, at least you've got access to it uh, under Linux if you want. Not, Linux is not everyone's cup of tea. It took me a long time to like Linux. Uh, we're bringing out our first news release. Uh, Today we're releasing the, the Linux Ubuntu Remix, as a C DVD. It, you can run it from the DVD, it runs very fast, 3D acceleration supported. You can run everything to the DVD if you want. Alternatively, you can restore it to the hard drive. It's not difficult, even I can do it. So it's good. Um, we're, st we're in the final stages of uh, putting together our AMI store. Uh, it's a, a digital store, and it's for Aon products and for developers. So we want developers to uh, be able to market their products through Ami Store and actually get some payment for the, the hard work they do. So but more on that later. Uh, but uh, that's the logo created by uh, Tony's fellow Australian, Kevin Saunders. Ah, now what's been going on? Um, there's, been <laughs> there's been lots of things going on. <laughs> Getting back to our roots. Um, for the last 18 months, we've been working with uh, uh, Varisys, or Ultravarisys, as they're now called, uh, on uh, Freescale-based systems. Uh, and I say systems, not system. And of course, Freescale is a spin out from Motorola, the original Motorola, the old Motorola. And it's also linked back to the, the history of the, uh, the Amiga with the 68000. 
uh, obviously PowerPC again. So we're working on Freescale Core IQ P series PowerPC CPUs. Uh, some people can pronounce that Quarig, uh, but uh, it, official name is Core IQ. Why they put funny letters like that, I don't know. So we've just signed $1.2 million worth of contracts for development and uh, manufacturing. Committed. It's the biggest investment in the Amiga computer for the last, I don't know, how many years? No. <laughs> she does now. Matthew, Matthew can't sleep at night. So. I got a fiber I can help. <laughs> so, it's again obviously Amiga One. It's designed for Amiga One. It's PowerPC, PowerPC 64 bit. Uh, the Core IQ, P3 and P5 series, uh, multi core, and uh, these devices are used in defense and aerospace. But the good news is uh, Freescale have set these products up as, a, as part of their product long, longevity program where they're guaranteeing a 10-year life, life cycle availability, lifespan availability. So I mean, it makes a P, you know, the PA Semi fantastic CPU. By the time we got it, Apple had, <laughs> uh, had shut it down. Here we've got a 10-year support, at least. Okay, so it looks good going forward. And what are these CPUs? Well, they're used in, uh, in, in lots of applications. Uh, but the P3 and P5 series uh, are the mid to top range of their, of their, their chips. And uh, we're looking at the, oh, I shall go on and show you them. If you look at the, the Freescale chart, Blizzard PowerPC was a 603E. That's where it fits on the sort of hierarchy of PowerPC architecture uh, based on these free scale charts here. And we're looking at systems based on chips from the P3 range and the P5 range. So obviously the top of the range for them at the moment, of their P series. And uh, to give you a better idea, the the core product is the P5020 we're using, 64-bit, uh, dual core, supports up to 16 gigabytes of memory. Could be more if, you, if they have bigger memory slots, I suppose. Uh, the P3041 is, and that's a two gigahertz processor. The P3, P3041 is a 1.5 gigahertz processor, dual uh, quad core. And being quad core, if all those cores are working and supported, and this is why uh, multi core is important for OS4, is actually MIPS terms, and MIPS doesn't mean anything really, but in MIPS terms on here, it's actually faster than the 5020 in MIPS terms. Uh, and top of the range, 5040, 2.4 gigahertz quad core. So, and uh, the MIPS on that is, is double of the, uh, the other, other processors. So we're looking at real processing power for the Amiga. So when people tell you, well, it's not equivalent to common, you know, up-to-date hardware, you know, it doesn't compete. This is a different beast. This is a, an Amiga one built for Amiga enthusiasts. And you can look at these reference charts on the, on the web. They're easily available, uh, which just gives you the, more of the information I was saying. There's the, the 5020, the one that uh, we're talking about. <coughs> There's the P3041, again, quad core. Uh, the 3041 only supports one uh, DDR3 RAM slot, eight gigabytes. The, obviously, there's two DDR3 slots on the, the bigger, on the uh, other CPUs. CPU boards. And the P5040, quad core. So this is the one we're concentrating on to start with, the P5020. Um, and I'm pleased to announce that, well, before I mention that, 
we've been working on it for 18 months. Before last year's uh, Emmy West, uh, we had the Revision 1 board. It's a smaller board. Um, Revision 2 is back to the same size as Nemo for a number of reasons. One, when we looked at the costings again, <coughs> the costing of the small board was almost the same price as the large board. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, the price has gone up. You know, things happen in the, in the world of uh, IT. And so we decided to go with the, the larger board and make that board universal rather than having a small board and a large board. It was actually more cost effective to have one board which would run potentially all three CPUs as a se separate systems. So that's the uh, Cyrus Vision 1. That's what the board's called. <laughs> There's one over there. It's a prototype. It's been reworked and reworked and reworked, but you're welcome to take a look at it. Uh, just before the Silicon Dream show in the UK, a few months back, uh, this is the Cyrus Plus motherboard development. This is what this motherboard will support 3041, the 5020, and the 5040. So we've got the possibility of different Amiga One systems. And that's important because I'll ask you a question later. <laughs> uh, I quite like the, the Varus's designers have really bought into the, um, the Amiga heritage. And uh, they started, you know, we asked to put things on the board like Breezing. Breezing is a B52. Uh, song title, and Beth will tell you all about uh, Commodore's tradition of putting B-52 song titles on the board. Uh, so Breezing's there, but they put things on that we didn't even know about, I didn't even spot. There's a Magneto helmet up there from the X-Men, <laughs> which I only spotted just recently up at the top. There's a little Amiga 500 down there, which they hid, which would be hidden normally, but it's, it's in there. And there's a few other, there's a Pac-Man. So, so they, they definitely bought into the idea of let's make these fun. What was really funny was when we had a meeting with uh, the, the managing directors of Varisys, they should have shown us the new board. And they went, oh, it's one thing I didn't show you. At the bottom, there's a micro SD card. Underneath it says, remove at risk of death. <laughs> <laughs> the managing directors didn't know it. And they went, what's that on there? <laughs> it's true, Matthew, isn't it? Yeah. So that was the, the, the bare board. This is the finished product. We took delivery of that just before the um, Silicon Dream show. And then shortly after, the first boards were shipped to uh, the Freedom Brothers. And I'm pleased to say, as of the 14th to the 10th, <laughs> first signs of life. So now we have uh, Kickstart booting on the, uh, the Cyrus Plus motherboard. Wow. So that's, uh, it's actually, the process has gone a lot faster once we've got the boards from this time. So it's really good. So that obviously they continue to work on the, the, the main core drivers before then it's thrown over to Steve and his team, Stephen and his team to, to add the, the other uh, components of the, of the OS4 suite to fully support the board. So I'm pleased to announce that uh, we'll be starting a, a beta test program for the Cyrus Plus system. It will be, in some respects, similar to the, uh, the Nemo beta test program. Um, we're only looking for up to 50 beta testers this time. And uh, we ex the, the board will be based on the, the, the Core IQ 5020, E5, IE5500 cores, 2 gigahertz, 64-bit dual core. Uh, there'll be six, it, it will support up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, obviously, under Linux, that'll be supported. And hopefully, with Xkernel and whatever the work they're doing there, they'll also, they'll also break the barrier of the two gigabytes for Amiga OS. Uh, the boot firmware is on a micro SD card. There'll be uh, dual SATA 2.0. Uh, there's a PCIe Type 16 for the graphics card. Uh, PCI 4, PCI E times 4, and PCI E times 1, two of them. There's two PCI slots. Uh, the USB 2, six external, two internal. There's Ethernet, the serial, and there's an uh, enhanced uh, Xena Zorro combination based on uh, recommendations from Lyle Hazelwood. 
and it's part of the free scale longevity program, the CPU. So they're the main elements of the uh, Cyrus Plus board. But we, we've been trying in uh, Aon to actually broaden the horizons and uh, support all of the Amiga community. And uh, uh, we've been looking at classical, classical developments, you know, classic Amiga for Amiga computers. And the last news release that I wanted to mention uh, was we designed a new um, DSP multi-format sound card, which we call Prisma Megamix. Megamix is the name of the board. Megamix was again a B-52 song title. Uh, so we were, we were going to call it Prism, but then the Americans, <laughs> and the, the Americans and the British kind of spoiled that for us. So it's Prisma, uh, and uh, it'll pl you can play and encode on your classic Amiga, even at 6800. Uh, all the modern sound audio formats. And uh, the, um, the hardware's been de developed by, the concept was Matthew's, his idea, his concept. Matthew at the back of the room. Uh, the hardware has been developed by Michael Bulmer in Germany. <laughs> and the, and the, soft, the firmware's been developed by Ian Gladhill in the UK. So really an international. Uh, collaboration and uh, it, the last report I saw from Ian was that he just played three albums all the way through for you know, three hours on his uh, uh, Amiga 1500. It's a Zorro, Zorro 2 and clock port. So on the, on the Zorro cards, on the Zorro equipped Amiga, we'd have full uh, capabilities and on an A A1200 with a clock port, we can play through there as well. Uh, Clockbook drivers have been written now, but the Zara drivers have already been written. And the, uh, the, G the GUI has been done by Matthew. Do you know Matthew's a coder? Yeah. I didn't. There you are. So Matthew's done all the coding work for the GUI. Cool. GUI. So give your Amiga its voice. Classic guys, this is for you. <laughs> if you've got any questions about Amiga OS 4, <laughs> The man sitting there. <laughs> and <laughs> he left his hat on. <laughs> then I knew he was such a fancy dresser. How come he's wearing pants? It's not what you said last night. <laughs> So now I've got a straw poll for you. <coughs> We're liable to have three new models, three new Amiga One models. And we've been playing around with names. And, and uh, obviously, Matthew and I have different opinions. So that's why I bought a straw poll. And I'm not going to give any pref tell you what my preference is. I won't cough or anything. <laughs> so, top left, we could call it the Amiga One A1500. It's a 1.5. Gigahertz processor, the P3041, 3041. And we could call the 5020, the A2000, Amiga 1A2000, slash 20, like Commodore did with the slash 30s and slash 40s. Uh, and then call the 5040, A2000 slash 40. That's one set of three. The next one is we say, okay, well, look, we'll call the 3041, the A2000, and the, the the 5020 versions, the A4000, 020, 040. Right? Third option is to say, okay, well, let's just take <coughs> use of the free scale numbering. The, the 3040 is a 3040 chip, let's call it the Amiga 3000. Sorry, Amiga 1, A3000. A and let's call the other one, the A5000, a 20 and a 40. And then the final option is let's call it A3000. A5020, A5040. So there are the four options we're looking at. Can you please vote? <laughs> <laughs> right. Why A instead of X? Yeah. Um, two reasons. I want to call it AX. Uh, two reasons. One, I want the A in there. Because what most people do is drop the front part. You see X1000. Uh, and uh, so I thought, well, AX. It's not an A1000, it's an AX1000. Some 
some of the two of us, I won't say who, thinks that's too long and complicated. <laughs> uh, so that was the compromise to keep the A. Okay. Uh, is it always the same motherboard, just a different CPU? Uh, with the three, th with the thirty forty one, <coughs> it's it's going to be uh, only one. Well, it'll be probably two RAM slots, but only one will be active. So you've got a different you know, capability. So. Uh, but with the 50, the 50, 20, and 50, 40, same motherboard, different CPU. So, vote for number one. Hands up. <laughs> we haven't finished asking questions yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ask questions. Okay. Why, in the last example, for instance, why are you calling the first option an A3000 rather than an A5000? It was a different series of processors. It's a 3041, whereas the the, the other board is a 50 series, 5 series, P5. That's the main reason. And also, the two other two boards will support 16 gigabyte RAM, whereas the one above will be eight. Are any of these processors capable of going into a laptop? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Sir. 2000 and 3000 Did, yeah. Have. So yeah. I Google searched it. Yeah. Am I going to get an 181980? If I tell my friend I just got a brand new 8000 and they're going to Google it. Yeah, they're going to get an 1887 computer and I'm like, okay, that's not anything. So I'm just curious. I always want. I would say classic. I would say classic. I was Omega Freak, right? As you know. <laughs> uh, and I always wanted an Omega 5000. You know, when the 4,000, and there was the rumors of the Omega 5,000, several companies ha had plans for Omega 5,000. So obviously, that's why I... Uh, 5,000 is great. That's a great name. But I think the other name should be different. Not a 2,000 or... Let's, leave the, let's, let's, let's respect the classics. Let's leave their names and numbers alone. Now let's do something. Yeah. Yeah, no, you didn't know you needed a fourth option. Five left. Left. That would be a bottom left. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, these are the sort of conversations we've been having. And, uh, and some people say we've yeah, got yeah. to maintain the link with the past. We've got to, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. A link does not vote. Right, vote then. Number one. Number two. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> You do, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it's 40. 5, so I don't know. Number five. Number of the last one, number four. <laughs> 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 It's kind of evenly split, really, yeah. uh, between the... Can now, I ask a question? If you are going to go with option number four, could we take that... Uh, could, could, we, uh, little, could you consider the possibility of renaming the 8000 the 8040? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that was, one, that was one of the options I had, is to, is to give it a number that wasn't 83000. So, um, yeah. okay. so it would be 30, 40, 50, 20, 50, 40. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I guess we got... I can change. I still like the 5,000. Yeah, me too. I really yeah. like well, the 5,000. Well, that could be a 5,000. It wouldn't work, would it? Could it be a 3,000 slash 40? Would that be acceptable to people? Yeah, 3,000 was never offered with an O4O. Yeah, but it would break the scheme that would be other numbers. Why? It wouldn't break, it wouldn't break the scheme. It wouldn't break the scheme. You've got, you've got, if you're going with the third option, right? A3,000, of course, the P3 series. A5,000, of course, the, 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 uh, the P5 series. The number after the main model number refers to the number of cores, right? 44 cores, 22 cores, 44 cores, and who knows what's going to happen <coughs> in the future with where P5 is going to go. So 
Mm. I, 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 can handle that. You? I don't know anything. <laughs> I, I originally uh, came up with a number that was incorporated, the number of calls as well as the number. And Matthew said that sounds like a, ro a road, road number. Because <laughs> in the UK we have A numbers, so the A4947, you know, that was no good. <laughs> true, true. So I like the idea of simplifying it. Uh, I quite like the idea of the, the, the slash 20 slash 40 because it's, yeah, right. that was a known Commodore uh, way of doing things. But doesn't it usually mean the megahertz when you have slash something? It does. Mm. I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I was bending it a little bit. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the input there. It gives me lots of ammunition. Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> What we might do is we might throw open to the community and say, look, what do you want these to be called? Um, how are you going to do that? Well, <laughs> through, through, uh, it'll be through our website. We'll do something in your oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. On IRC, man. Well, I was worried he was going to do it on the forums. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, it's again. So we'll do it on our website, and you can vote on the website and, and give people the option. But, but uh, it's interesting that you were almost evenly split between the the third and fourth option. And at every, at every talk, you're supposed to leave people laughing, so I thought I'd leave you laughing. It's <laughs> 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 not looking. <laughs> They've never looked better. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who these are, that's <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> And that's Matthew, who thinks he looked like I've given him a peanut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> but they, without, without Amiga Kit, there would be no Aeon, uh, and there'd be no uh, X1000, and there'd, there'd definitely be no Cyrus Plus. So I think a big round of applause to these guys, because without them, there, there would be no Amiga 1 X1000. Is that a good save, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> so, can I throw up now to any questions? Yeah. Sure. Um, the, uh, actually, I'll, I'll withdraw that. Okay. So, we'll vote that laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it to <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's pretty obvious that the, like, the, the netbook project's been cancelled. It's pretty obvious that, and I'm, I'm sure Stephen will um, confirm that this afternoon. It was never an Aeon project, but you know we tried to help out. Uh, we we haven't given up, and we're looking. And I say we're looking at other options, but we're saying nothing until you know things are. Yeah, I want one. I'll take two. <laughs> what price? <laughs> you have a delivery date, I got a visa. <laughs> Do you take kidneys? <laughs> kidneys and firstborn children is good, yes. <laughs> as long as you don't take them across the state line. For the people who are watching at home, uh, at Ami West, a lot of things go on, go on behind the scenes before Ami West starts. And a lot of these references are to do with things that have happened. <laughs> sure, yeah. What's really surprising is, uh, well, not surprising, there's not much, there, there is a difference. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, any idea about the price points for, for three systems if we do them? Uh, 5040, no idea, because we haven't got, uh, it, the 5040 is not really available in the wild to, you know, commercially, it's only available to developers and the like, so uh, Freescale haven't really finalized the pricing on that. <coughs> The good news is the 5040 is less expensive than the, uh, <laughs> a lot less expensive, I suppose, than the PA Semi CPU. So that has an effect. Everything else on the board will be in the same sort of price range as the Nemo, but the 5020 brings the price down. So I, I would expect the, uh, a fully built system, 
uh, with the uh, 50, 20 installed to be, um, I would say, quite a lot lower. Not a lot lower, but it's still an expensive piece of kit, but lower than the X1000. And we are, the other thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, offer the motherboard for sale uh, as well as systems. So it'll be motherboard or system. On that note, we are also offering the X1000 motherboard, the Nemo motherboard for sale uh, to experienced builders. So, uh, so that, that now is going to be available for sale and we're going to put a news release out about that. So we are, and we understand shipping to the states from the UK or any other parts of the world's expenses, especially those big packages. Uh, so that'll uh, help to cut costs. Uh, the Thirty-four. Sell a container full of your okay. Well, what we want to do is is to like ship fifty. Uh, you know, for example, and have a US uh, entity that wants to take fifty and support the US market. We are committed to, to in total. <laughs> number of units uh, in our first batch is 500 and uh, then we'll take in batches of uh, three to 500 after that uh, the the other th the 3041 uh, CPU is about what's the price of that CPU Matthew it, it's it's lower it's obviously lower than the 5020 uh, but the 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 board costs uh, are not substantially less because you've got the same board. So the price differential between a 5020 and a 3041 system, it will be lower, but not tremendously. And, you know, it, as long as once, we, obviously we want the advantages of multi-core on Amiga OS 4 uh, to take advantage of that board. How much memory do you plan on having? Uh, or is that memory? Yes, user, you can, the user can choose. I mean, I, I, for example, I'd like, me, I want both slots full. <laughs> uh, yeah, some people may just want one, one slot. Late 2014, early 2015? Oh, sorry, the beta test that we, we actually have <laughs> committed to the beta test program, and the first boards are coming through at the beginning of the year. So that's when the beta test program will start. Um, I would say, you know, allow six months. Although, having said that, we are committed to the manufacturing run anyway. So, uh, when do they start, Matthew? Yeah. And the manufacturing run? Um, well, but we we're committed to it anyway because we've signed the contract. Yeah, yeah. So, I would expect 2014, you know, Earliest, less, you know, we know what happens in the, uh, in, in the Amiga world. Things don't get done as fast as we hope. So earliest, I would say, mid, mid to late 2000, uh, mid second to third quarter, mid 2000, 2014, first boards. Assuming everything goes well. I mean, and of course, you know how these things happen. Uh, one of the delays on the Cyrus, original Cyrus prototype was uh, they made a little error. <laughs> and uh, they... Um, the board was supposed to support, support three CPUs, but some of the lines were missed out, so it couldn't. So they had to put an interposer board in, and they were tests, testing with interposer board. Um, and so it, we decided to go for the full-size board rather than mess around with, with that design. So that adds delays, and that's why it's delayed it to now. Uh, it's the same board. So, what would, uh, in fact, the, the Matthew, because you've got the latest update on that, uh, how much more development work's got to be done on the 3041 variant of the board? And the answer is? Well, the 3041 is, uh, is probably about all that's uh, behind the 've actually committed to the uh, most of the f first batch to be 5020s and then we've we left 100 which could be 5040s or uh, 3041s you know, depending on the the speed of bring up any more questions I 
imagine as yeah. you bring that up, um, where is there a possibility that you will not actually offer a P3 based board depending on the performance differential versus the cost differential? The cost is of the, of the parts going to be overwhelmed by your development costs, so the delta there is going to be relatively Well, what, what we've unless, done, yeah. Unless these guys get X kernel going really strong, the single thread performance of your P5 board is going to be way out of the Yeah. The, the single thread performance of the P5 is much better than the, the quad core performance of the P, uh, P3041. Uh, we're keeping our options open, and that's why we've got the uh, 100 boards being manufactured without the CPU. So we can actually then re retrofit it later. Uh, but uh, I would like to think there's, a, there's enough price differential to make it, you know, worth it. Yeah. But not significant. That's the trouble. Yep. Yeah, the CPU is fixed uh, uh, mainly for uh, they do it for long time, long term stability. And you know what happens with some of those uh, cyber vision, cyber storm. Yeah. yeah. So, then and, and, and ultraviolet are not keen on carriers. They they want to be on the board for reliability. Oh, right. Um, uh, the uh, prototypes have been, that's all the developments been on the prototypes, and Matthew will give you an update on that one. Availability on the prison. Pris yeah, okay. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope it was uh, <laughs> exciting or interesting. Uh, nothing ever happens in the Amiga world. <laughs> 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 All right. That needs to be a mouse pad. <laughs> <laughs>